Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's sample size time. Yes, it's that time when we get to determine how big of a sample we need to draw in order to be as close as we're happy with. In other words, accuracy and error is directly related to sample size. Bigger the sample size, smaller the error. We can work it either by how close we want to be or how big our sample is. So let's take a look at this real quick. Like I just said, um, how close to right do we need to be is often and is a function of the size of our n or our sample size. So in this formula, we have n, sample size, same thing it's always meant, z. What is z? z is back to those confidence levels those Z values that we had for those different confidence levels for the 99, 95, remember we had 1.96 for a 95% confidence interval. We had 2.58 for the 99% confidence, confidence interval. Yep, it's the same Z value. Simply the standard normal value corresponding to the desired level of confidence. It's our good old friend sigma, and we know since sigma is a Greek letter, and all Greek letters represent population parameters, we know that sigma is simply the standard deviation for the population. E, what's E? E is the maximum allowable error, how far we're willing to be off. How big the error is, is often determined by what we're testing or what we're trying to come to a conclusion about. If it's the price of a three topping pizza in my business location or in my market, I'm not real concerned about being really close. If, however, it is the percentage or the number of people who will experience bleeding from the eyes if they take my new drug, I'm probably going to want my E value to be pretty small. Last but not least, I have a square, an exponent. So, in order to determine the optimum sample size based on my allowable error, I'm simply going to take the Z value associated with my confidence level times the standard deviation of my population divide it by the error, square it, and come up with n. Just remember with n, we always round up to the next whole number because you can't have 0 .02 of a person. So let's take a look at an example of this, and I think y'all will catch on to this one really quick. All right, so what we have is we want to estimate the average number, so we're estimating for the mean, I'm going to estimate the average number of people who crash rental cars within two automobiles. So the population of car wrecking renters is known to be 10. So we have a standard deviation of 10. We want to be 95% certain that we are correct. So we're talking about a 95% confidence interval. So we're simply going to apply, simply going to apply this formula right here to the information that I have. Well, what do I know? I know that Z for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. I was just told that my standard deviation was 10. I want to be within, remember I said how close or how far off do we want to be? I want to be within two cars. So, in order to do this, now I'm simply going to take my 1.96 times 10. I'm going to divide it by 2. And I'm going to come out with 9.8 squared. So when I take 9.8 times 9.8, I'm going to come up with 96.04. So, what that's telling me is, and I'm going to round up, I now know that I need to sample, whoops, my, whoa, my sample size needs 
whoops, my sample size, I'm going to back off of that, actually needs to be 97 cars. Because I want to round up, um, because I'd like to be within two automobiles of being correct. That's all it is to calculating for a sample size. Because of the properties of our most dreaded friend, algebra, if I'm given n, and I'm given z, and I'm given sigma, I can now solve for the error. If I am given, on the other hand, if I'm given e and n and z, I can solve for sigma. So I can always solve for the error or the sample size or the level of confidence or the standard deviation provided that I've got three out of these four pieces of information. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all there is to calculating sample size. Have an awesome day.